Hello and welcome to The Shooting Show. In this week's episode, we're going to be having a look at the new TH50 thermal rifle scope from Infrared and supplied by Scott Country. So I quite often get asked what's the best way of zeroing a thermal rifle scope. Um, a lot of the time I'll just use steel target and uh, I'll then just use some standard kitchen foil and uh, tape a little square of that to it. Uh, another option is um, hand warmers, they make good thermal targets. Uh, you can also buy, I don't know if I've got any in here, a quick rummage, uh, yes, you can also buy little thermal targets. Uh, these are infrared thermal targets. I've got these, I think, uh, picked them up at a show. Actually, I think they came from Scott Country. Uh, but I'm sure Scott Country or someone online will sell these. And uh, these are very good little little things. You just uh, stick these little self-adhesive uh, targets on a, onto a steel target or a bit of, bit of cardboard or something like that. And uh, away you go. So as I've actually found some of these little infrared targets in my bag, I'm going to use one of those today. So we won't need the kitchen floor, which I pinched out the drawer this morning. Just pull the back off. Stick that to your target. Easy as that. Right, now to lug it down the field. Now I've already zeroed this rifle, so um, it should be spot on, but it doesn't know I'm just to check it out in the field. I've zeroed it um, out at uh, an inch high at 100 yards, so that basically equates to about a 200 yard zero with a 223 using 50 or 55 grain bullets. So that should mean out to about 250 yards, so I'll be pretty much bang on the money. Right, so I've put a bit of duct tape on that target because it wasn't sticking very well. But uh, hopefully, I should still be able to see it all right. He is in. I actually got these because I do quite a bit of shotgun shooting as well. But uh, I'm finding as I get older, <laughs> old hearing's not what it used to be. And, uh, might as well look after it while I can. Right. So that, that's bang on target. I can't see the thermal target anymore, so I must have hit that. I'll just put another round or two down on there, just center of the uh, center of the disc. Pretty happy with that, I think. That should be should be spot on. I'll go down and have a little look at the target. Right, that looks all right. I think that was one of the older shots that was on there before, but this little group here seems to be uh, what we've just done. So nothing wrong with that. Happy with that. Right, let's go and find some foxes. So this evening, I'm going to head out and uh, have a little look around for a few foxes. Um, we're on a uh, sheep farm here. There's uh, a lot of sheep and a lot of young lambs and that through these valleys. Um, and it's prime location for foxes. So uh, yeah, I'm going to have a little mooch around and um, see what I can find. So I'm 
just going to sit here and keep an eye out over this valley for a little while and just see if anything comes through. So as I say, I'm using the TH50 from Infrared. Um, this is very similar to the uh, TL35 that I've been using before. And I've got to say, this scope is really nice. I was very impressed with the TL35. I felt that was probably the best thermal scope um, on the market until I tried this one. And uh, this is kind of um, the same, but with some added bonuses. Look, it's got like a, uh, a completely round screen as well, rather than a sort of standard kind of square screen that you get in most um, thermal scopes. This one's actually more like a day scope, so you can see all of the, the, the circular um, image all the main um, functions that there on the eyepiece same as the TL35 record palettes power brightness um, it zooms on the top there really nice smooth zoom on that and focus on the front so it's dead easy to use yeah really liking the scope and as always using the um, Pulsar Accolade um, another good piece of thermal equipment that I particularly like and uh, to be honest I wouldn't come out at night without them, I feel lost without them now. So as you can see I've got a good view out across this valley. Um, sheep have actually just moved up out of the bottom of the valley or most of them and they're uh, up on the top of the hill at the moment so at the moment they're about probably 500 yards away uh, but yeah that's always a kind of a draw for foxes anywhere there's livestock the uh, foxes seem to sort of gravitate to that. Um, I can't say anything over there at the minute. In fact, uh, apart from one or two badgers out and about, it looks fairly clear at the minute. But I'll just keep my eyes peeled and uh, see if anything comes through here. If not, I'll give it half hour or so and then move a bit further down, have a look around the corner. So that's the first fox down for the evening. Um, that's a decent sized dog fox that came out of cover probably about 100 yards from me. And um, yeah, the only problem seeing it in the scope, just not got over. So um, yeah, it's a good one to start with anyway. Nice big old fox that. We've got uh, sheep and um, lambs down the bottom here. So obviously foxes and that up on the hill here all they've got to do is drop straight down to the bottom of this hill which is probably only probably three or four hundred yards and they're straight in amongst the lambs so it's an important job we're doing just keeping on top of the foxes
was uh, just over 150, so it was around about 160, 165 that fox just sat chest onto me. And um, that's just smack that sweet, so he's gone straight over, rolled down the bank a little bit, and walk up, and see if we can find him. That's a dog fox, surprisingly enough. I thought that was going to be a vixen because uh, it looks a bit scraggly. It's not very big, but yeah. Good. Another one down. Right, so I've just spotted what it looks like a fox coming along next to the barn down by my truck. Foxy, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just walk down, there's a uh, uh, metal box, big metal box in the uh, field here, so uh, I'm going to see if I can get down and lean on that, and my he's probably, he's probably near, near on 200 metres, but heading my way, so I'm just going to walk straight down towards him, I've got the wind in my favour, the wind's blowing straight towards me, so if I can make it down to that, that uh, metal box, that'd be ideal. Right, so with that fox, um, it was behind the fence, and then I got to that to this container here, put the rifle up on it, and I could just see a heat source by one of the fence posts. So um, I'm thinking it was behind the fence post. So I was giving it a little squeak, nothing. Giving it a little squeak, nothing. So I kind of pan round with the scope up and down, thinking that that fox was either up against that fence post or it had been, and it had warmed it up or something like that. And um, I suddenly see it about 50 yards or 50 metres away, just in the gateway. So uh, it turned out, I think, probably what it is, is that the fox has cocked its, ladder, it's cocked its leg up against the fence post. <laughs> and that's what I could see glowing. And I thought it was still somewhere in the grass and just behind the fence. But um, no, it, it obviously come up while I was uh, sort of getting myself ready by this container and getting the rifle on it and that. So anyway, job done. So I'm going to see if it's a dog or a vixen. It's a vixen. So it uh, just goes to show as well though that foxes don't take a lot of notes of vehicles because my truck is parked about 15 yards away from me at the moment and um, she wasn't the slightest bit bothered about that. So I think unless you're actually driving the truck or it's moving then um, they just don't seem to take any notice at all of vehicles being parked up. Right, so that's it for this evening. I've had a pretty good evening though. I managed to get uh, two dogs and a vixen this evening. So um, that's good to get these numbers down that with all the sheep and lambs and that in the valley. Um, TH50's performed really well. I really enjoyed using this scope. Um, it's currently sat on my 223 rifle. In case you were wondering what I've been using this evening. It's a custom rifle uh, based on a, on a ticker action, as you can probably see. And um, yeah, it's account for a lot of foxes now, this rifle.
We're back out on the pigeons. Um, we want a bit of sort of like used uh, or, or eaten off right in the corner. We've got the uh, motorway behind us, but we are shooting directly away from it. So we're taking all the safety issues out of it. We're going away from it. Um, have me Sens Digital Ear Defenders. Also wearing me Komodo Pro uh, glasses, shooting glasses. They're made with a polycarbonate material to give you protection from anything that might happen, like if for the worst scenario, you know, you, you happen to take some shot, they will give your eyes full protection. Or if you're in a hide, you know, they fling back, a bit of brush flings back, it will give your eye protection. They also have the added feature of having a little solar panel right in the middle here that will, if I cover the solar panel up, the, light, the glasses now go light. As I take them off, they go dark. They they are they change one tenth of a second from dark to light. So you've got two sets of glasses, one dark, one light. So instead of having to change lenses, it does it for you. So in all in all, to, for me, I think they're the perfect glasses. Whether you're clay shooting, you're game shooting. Or like me, you're sitting in a pigeon hide waiting for the pigeons to come in. Here comes a pigeon, we might get to test them out. Here we go, here we go. Oh, just. All in all, two pairs for the price of one, the perfect set of glasses to be wearing in the pigeon hide. I hope you've enjoyed the episode, thanks for watching, please like and subscribe and remember if you're not already a member of BASC, it is time to join.